Kashiwagi suddenly witnesses the love of his life in front of him, but she runs away after feeling shy. He chases after her but is woken up by his alarm system, which is operated by an AI robot named Loverin. Asahi has a brief argument with Loverin before he watches some TV, and notices a fortune teller who seemingly tells him that his life is going to change. She talks about various spots such as the train and the stairs, but none of this makes sense to Asahi. Anyway, he decides it's time to go to school, so he heads out to catch the train. However, Asahi crashes into a cute girl named Aoi in the middle of his path, and she lands on his face. Asahi is shy to see the treasure on top of him, but Aoi reveals that she actually wanted him to see her panties. Our hero is shocked to witness such behavior, but doesn't think much of it and awkwardly makes his way out. Now, Asahi heads to the train but bumps into a mature woman named Bai Mangfa, who falls asleep on his shoulder. After an abrupt halt, our hero ends up touching Bai's forbidden goods, and is given a kick for being creepy. As he walks away in embarrassment, our hero realizes that he's bumping into girls at the same places that the fortune teller had mentioned in her earlier prediction. To add fuel to the fire, another girl named Karen trips off the stairs and crashes into Asahi. As expected, she ends up sitting on his face and makes some suggestive sounds on top of him. Karen realizes that things are getting out of hand, so she runs away after calling Asahi a creep. Keeping this in mind, our hero tries to avoid a cleaning robot because the fortune teller had mentioned this as well. Unfortunately, it rushes towards him with a bra. The owner of this bra, Amelia Irving, comes running at Asahi and confronts him for being a shady character. The comedy of errors continues after the robot takes the redhead away. Asahi meets a cute dog and pats it for a bit, but then he notices a girl named Ilya getting violated by a much larger hound. Asahi wants to ignore the situation and walks away because he thinks that Ilya is actually a boy. But then karma hits him fast, as the dog decides to release his heat on Asahi instead. Our hero asks Ilya for help, but she simply runs away feeling embarrassed. Asahi wakes up after his trauma and rushes to school as he's already late. In a massive twist, the new students in his class include Aoi, Amelia, Ilya, Karen, and even his new teacher turns out to be Mangfa. The teacher notices Asahi as a late entry in class, and the girls try to talk to him, but he acts weird in order to avoid an awkward scenario. Unfortunately, he is found out and slapped for his earlier antics. Luckily, Asahi finds a new friend in Yoshiho, who is actually impressed by his conquests with the ladies. The fantasy girls don't seem to be too fond of Asahi, but it seems as if Ayoi has a soft spot for him. Later, Yoshiho tells Asahi that he shouldn't take so much stress, and he should try to talk it out with the girls. Our hero takes his advice and begins chatting with Ayoi. Things are going well, so he decides to return her panties, but he accidentally pulls out Amelia's bra from his pocket. Of course, Ayoi gets traumatized and slaps Asahi for not having any control. Luckily, our hero shares a sweet moment with Karen when he offers her some food. However, his relief doesn't last very long as Ilya is chased by the monster dogs once more. Asahi doesn't want to be part of this drama, but the dogs have other plans in mind, so they have some fun with him. If it's any concession, Ilya makes up with Asahi and even Mangfa treats his injuries in the sick room. Here, Amelia strikes up a friendship with Asahi as he finally returns her bra. To make matters more interesting, Asahi meets Aoi a little later by following a letter she wrote to him. That's when she says she loves him, and the breeze offers our hero a peek at the reward she is offering to him. Aoi says that they must kiss if they become a couple under a cherry tree, and it makes Asahi a little nervous. It's very distracting for him to notice the sights under Aoi's skirt, and he brings it to her attention. The nerdy babe blushes and runs away after spotting her panties on top of the branches of a tree but it makes Asahi interested in her. He bumps into Ilya later on and panics as he thinks she has brought the dogs with her once more. However, he is shocked to learn that Ilya loves him as well, especially because he still thinks she is a boy. Their romance is cut short when Mangfa interrupts them and runs away with Asahi. The teacher feels up her student as they escape some goons and then she declares her love for him as well. Mangfa uses her assets to seduce Asahi. But the virgin boy runs away as he won't be able to handle her experience. 
Unfortunately, there's no respite for him as Karen dresses up as a bride. She tries her best to make Asahi her husband, but he manages to give her the slip and escapes. Unfortunately, Amelia is also after his life and tries to trick him into signing a marriage form. Asahi avoids her and rushes back home for some peace and quiet. However, it turns out that all the girls have started living in his house as his new harem. Asahi is very confused by all this attention, and that's when Love Rin states that these girls have been chosen by Asahi's dad as his potential brides. They are to live with him till he picks a wife, and Asahi can already see how this idea can go terribly wrong. Our hero doesn't want to participate in this charade, but the girls urge him to give them a chance. The fantasy babes kick things off by cooking dinner for their lover boy, and then Aoi gets close and personal with him. Asahi tries to find some privacy in the bathroom, but Amelia and Karen take off their clothes and try to seduce him over there. There's no rest for the damned as Asahi finds Mangfa spying on him in his room, so he decides to leave his house. This way, he can finally be by himself. Asahi visits a beautiful shrine and enjoys the calmness around him, while Aoi comes to fetch him home. She begs him to come back and promises that the girls will leave. However, our hero doesn't want to kick out his harem, so he tells Aoi that the girls can stay. The couples come back home and Asahi tells the others that they should try to live together in peace. It's a brand new morning, but Amelia is already up to no good as she tries to take Asahi's footprint for a marriage form. Our hero sits down for breakfast and Aoi serves him with a smile on her face. Asahi wants to know why she isn't as intrusive as the other girls, but they keep getting interrupted for various reasons. Amelia clearly doesn't know how to manage her clothes and her ketchup skills aren't any better. After an eventful meal, Asahi and his harem go to school and try to pay attention in class. Karen shows off her genius skills and it makes Amelia jealous, so she also walks up to the blackboard. However, she mentions a suspicious white liquid that makes everyone blush. Later, Amelia tries to win at a rock-paper-scissors game, but is unable to do so. She keeps losing but doesn't give up hope. Unfortunately, the redhead loses a bet with the harem even after staying up all night, and Asahi starts to worry about her. At night, our hero doesn't find Amelia with the girls, so he goes to her room. However, he hears some suggestive voices coming from the bed and grows suspicious. Asahi barges into the room hoping not to find anything shady and luckily, Amelia is simply trying to study kanji. She isn't making much progress, so Asahi offers to help her, but even his best efforts aren't enough to boost her chances. He refuses to give up on Amelia and continues to help her in the library. However, she becomes frustrated and laments that she'll never be able to learn her lover boy's language. The harem starts to worry about Amelia, so Asahi goes to her room to offer her some support. She lashes out at him at first, but then she breaks down into tears and says that Asahi will never like her. Our hero offers comfort to the redhead, and this triggers extreme feelings of love. Amelia finally comes to her senses with the harem secretly spying on their conversation. Asahi exposes them and then Amelia finally gets down to business with her kanji studies. The dazzling redhead finally achieves what she wants by scoring good in her tests. Meanwhile, Yoshiho continues to feel jealous of Asahi's harem. At night, Ilya thinks back to her past when her dad told her to live as a boy. She is visibly upset by this memory, but Asahi walks in on her in the bathroom and it makes her feel embarrassed. Now, the girls win a trip to the hot springs, so they make their way to the Feather Fan Inn. However, the hostess of the inn is a giant woman who could easily be mistaken for a man. Asahi and Ilya take a room together and she plays along as a boy without realizing the consequences. Asahi even gives Ilya a light spanking before the girls gather to play some tennis. It's all fun and games till Mangfa decides to play dirty and uses a secret technique that tears all of Karen's clothes. She hides in embarrassment while Asahi faints from the impact of a ball attack. At night, the harem and their lover boy enjoy a heavy meal, but then Amelia suggests some naked sushi. The hostess makes a scary appearance, after which she talks about a Tengu platter. Amelia is told about the legend of the Tengu creatures, and then the hostess states that the hot spring has actually been visited by one of the mythical beasts. Later, Asahi and Ilya go for a bath, but she feels extremely nervous as her lover boy continues to treat her like a man. As the girls explore each other's bodies, Ilya decides to trick Asahi with a rather gigantic disguise. 
Our hero buys into her deception and even compliments her physique as he believes that size does matter. Things get awkward when Asahi compares his own beast to Ilya's disguise, and then he offers to scrub her back. Asahi is surprised to see how silky Ilya's skin is, so she switches positions in order to avoid suspicion. She barely manages to keep up with the disguise and things get tricky when she has to sit in the sauna room with Asahi. Ilya begins to lose consciousness but then she lets out excess steam, and this convinces Asahi that she's a true man among men. He admits defeat and rushes off to cool down, so Ilya is in the clear zone. However, she loses her towel after that and has to improvise quickly. When Asahi spots her, Ilya dresses up as the Tengu and scares everyone with her disguise. But then her facade finally comes to an end when she slips off some soap and reveals everything to Asahi. Our hero nurses Ilya back to health and apologizes to her for treating their relationship so casually. She becomes emotional and says that she wants to live as a girl, so Asahi tells her that she should live on her own terms. This makes Ilya fall in love with Asahi, and then the harem makes their way back home. However, everyone seems to believe that a Tengu had indeed visited the springs, and it goes viral all over the news. The creature actually does happen to exist, so he wonders who the humans are talking about. Now, Ilya finally accepts her identity as a girl and continues her life with the harem under the name Arena. And that's the end of the show. Like, share, and subscribe to show some love. I'll see you soon.